Support WrestleTalk! Support each other. Last night, Twitter was on the receiving end of a massive hack. Huge names such as Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos and Kanye West all had their accounts taken over. So that's why he announced he's running for president. Oh wait, no, 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 that was real. As part of a scam to make users send them money through Bitcoin. In response, because so many big names have been attacked, Twitter froze all verified accounts from tweeting. Suck it, Blompier, eh? that's why I don't have a blue tick. Which included all of WWE's many, many accounts and AEW's too, which happened during the broadcasts of NXT and Dynamite, when they want the most social media traffic. The frozen accounts were still allowed to retweet things though, so both AEW and WWE quickly made temporary accounts, which their main accounts retweeted, with WWE creating at temp WWE NXT and AEW creating at AEW. How was that not taken already? Oddly though, the at TNT drama account was okay, and still managed to tweet in support of Orange Cassidy. Cassidy is so cool, he can even no-sell tech scandals. Who do you think is Twitter's mystery hacker? Chad Gable, Xavier Woods, or Ali? Tell me, oh yeah, I forgot about that storyline on SmackDown, in the comments down below. Kyrie Sane's future in WWE has been more up in the air than a Kyrie Sane flying elbow for a few months now, with conflicting reports about whether she's been written off TV or not, what her contract status with WWE is, and whether or not she wants to return to Japan. According to the very reliable Tokyo Sports though, Kyrie will be returning to Japan to be with her husband, who she married in February this year with an announcement expected around SummerSlam time. But don't take my Gaijin word for it, here's what the Japanese language article itself had to say using the seamless Google Translate. Since he joined a Japanese man on February 22nd, there is also a media report that it is very important to move the base to Japan. He also told his neighbours that he wanted to return to Japan, and he was whispered to return to Japan early this year. However, it is unlikely that they will completely leave WWE and participate in other groups in Japan. Most of the argument is that the base will be moved to Japan and that it will continue to maintain friendly relations with WWE. Although I don't yet know what shape to choose, it seems that there will be some announcement by the Summer Festival, SummerSlam, August 23rd. So the big takeaways there are move the base to Summer Festival for the correct shape. Tony Khan and Chris Jericho have decided their preferred rating shape is how high their 18 to 45 demographic viewership is, as that's the most valuable to advertisers. Completely coincidentally, they've started emphasising these numbers in recent weeks, where NXT has been outdrawing them in overall figures. But AEW co-executive Vice President Cody has shot on Khan and Jericho's ratings-related tweets to Alex McCarthy of TalkSport. It's really easy to get caught up in the weeds with like, for X amount of weeks we beat WWE in the ratings, or get into this wild demo discussion. If you ever catch me tweeting about the demos, Please just delete my account. I'm sure Twitter will eventually do that for you if they're hacked again. I think instead of romanticizing about the amount of people that are watching, I think the show has to be about getting better. Speaking of, now it's time for me to review the best show on Wednesday night because NXT is for marks, AEW Dynamite in about five minutes. Come on 18 to 45 demos. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Luke's favorite fan, the one, the only, the awesome Bubba and the anomaly, CJ Warren. This episode of Dynamite to me immediately felt bigger than the previous two Fighter Fest nights. Not just with a different intro, not just by having Taz on commentary, which was a really effective way to build the main event, not just with Sonny Kiss getting a special cheerleader entrance, but because Justin Roberts was wearing a bow tie. So fancy. He's so fancy. The opener saw Cody defend his TNT title against the concrete sunny kiss from a rose from the grey. Which saw Kiss put in a good showing, but lose to the more experienced Cody, who seemingly worked heel near the end, exposing the top turnbuckle even though he was in control. Which was made even more peculiar given the context around the ring. Tully Blanchard was frequently shown watching on from the stands, just as he has been for FTR matches like the one that followed, potentially building the increasingly teased new Four Horsemen faction with those three and Sean Spears. Continuing their Dr. Robotnik wacky races 
mashup, the Butcher and the Blade Uber service then gave the Lucha Bros a lift to the ring for their FTR dream match. I had high expectations for this, which weren't only reached, they were dived over for a double knees up counter from a top rope splash. The Lucha Bros are like these balls of energy that can't be contained by traditional tag rules, although they did their best, which is the absolute opposite to FTR's very respectful ground and pound offense. But it worked brilliantly, with the two styles completing each other rather than clashing. Dax pinned Phoenix to win, and then the post-match was somehow just as good. The Bucks super kicked the moustache off Butcher's face to get FTR's truck keys back, and then they were joined by an apologetic Kenny Omega, who came out with some beers to celebrate with them all after he rudely offended FTR two weeks ago. Because there's no point crying over spilled milk, you want to hit someone for it instead. FTR poured their beers over Omega and walked off as the Bucks held Kenny back. This is a fantastic way to not just further tension in the tag division, but also to escalate the pre-existing rifts in the elite. Sadly, the following liquid poured over someone's head angle didn't work so well for me. The inner circle, San Sammy Guevara, came out so Jericho could declare himself the demo god in the ratings war, which AEW are now acknowledging more and more, despite them initially saying they wouldn't, and that Orange Cassidy's career is now dead. Cassidy came out, gave them a low effort thumbs down, which signalled a vat of orange juice to fall on Jericho, Hager, Santana and Ortiz. Yes, Ortiz taking several bumps for orange juice was comical, and Jericho selling how sticky he was on commentary for the rest of the night did make me laugh. But overall, this wasn't for me. I didn't find it funny. In fact, I found it rather lame. Cassidy's character walks a tightrope of jumping the shark anyway. To compound that with hokey sports entertainment spots is in danger of pushing him over. Marco Stunt guffawing about how funny that all was in the following interview just made the whole angle feel all the more desperate too. Thankfully, AEW went right back to what they do best, really fun wrestling matches, as Jurassic Express took on The Elite, which had Hangman Page watching on from a bar. And he must be drunk, because that is not how you watch a TV screen in a backstage segment on a wrestling show. It should be at least 50 degrees more to the right of you. Jurassic Express are so good, even getting this week's edition of Craziest Canadian Destroyer of All Time. When Stunt was vaulted onto Luchasaurus' shoulders to Canadian destroy Nick Jackson into the ring. But the Elite are, unsurprisingly, on an otherworldly other level. Not just in the slickness of their wrestling moves, but in an incredibly satisfying attention to detail and character. Because it looks like Hangman Page has been a six month long red herring, as Kenny Omega is starting to turn heel. After Kenny pinned Stunt for the win, he suddenly started wailing on Marco while psychotically smiling until the Bucks pulled him away. Heel Omega is a ridiculously exciting prospect, and it could all be building to a Hangman Page face turn against him, who was joined by FTR watching on backstage. There's so many layers, it's Onion Cassidy. After a brief Shida interview, Brandy and Ali beat two women in a squash match, and then Nyla Rose revealed Vicky Guerrero as her manager. That's all of the women's stuff on Dynamite, crammed into about 10 minutes into the bringing them down section of the show before the main event. AEW's treatment of their women's division is a consistently occurring major creative misstep. Taz cut a typically fierce pre-match promo before the main event, calling out Mox for spending time at home with his wife, but geniusly blaming John for spreading rumours about Brian Cage's arm injury. It was a brilliant way to reveal that, in kayfabe, Cage was actually hurt. It was a strain of realism that ran through the match, as Mox targeted Cage's obviously injured arm as Brian tried to play down this weakness. But Cage still looked incredibly impressive, German suplexing Mox onto a guardrail, hitting a seamless moonsault, and kicking out strong of a paradigm shift. After Taz had already set up Cage's muscular neck, means Mox's finisher isn't very effective. So Mox had to change tactics and continually locked in armbar variations. Faced with taking a loss, or his client spending five months out recovering, Taz threw in the towel. A brilliant, fantastic piece of booking. And just when you might start to dwell on Cage losing his first major match, Darby Allen made his return to save Mox from a beatdown, setting up another long foreshadowed feud. That was this week's Dynamite in about five minutes. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments down below, because I'll be replying to people from out of mental power. I thought this was an awesome show, the main event psychology, 
trilogy, the FTR vs Lucha Bros match, the Kenny Omega storytelling. It's just a shame they don't seem to care about their women's division. This week's Dynamite is 4 out of 5. But it's also a shame that the promotion is bringing in more and more fans into these tapings. It's only right that I call out AEW for the same reckless conduct I do WWE. So please consider that before you suddenly start leaping to AEW's defense. There are a lot of fans in the stands. They started off wearing their masks, but I saw several that removed them, and at least two wrestlers with Cassidy and Mox actually came out through them. All of that, I would argue, was unnecessary and could have been completely avoided. It was Quizzlemania 14 last night, which you can watch on Parts Fun Known right now, and it saw one of the wrestling game show's all-time highlights so far. Wale, drawing the WWE rap battle segment that he hosted between the Usos and the New Day, and getting a few key details quite wrong. Listen, listen. okay. <laughs> what? That's that's me, right? With the dare. Oh, that's me. That's me. That's Kofi. That's Woods, and that's E with the pancake. Because I was telling oh, you, like, wow. you that. Oh, that. And that's these are the Usos, but I had no time to do their hair. And that was supposed to be a ring, but he was like, stop. And I was trying to make it in a big ring. So that's Wood. That's Kofi, and that's the little old me, and that's Biggie. <laughs> oh, God, I'm dying. Adam, Adam, no, Adam you still no. with me, bro? We in it together. No. Hey, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying I'm to make a pancake because I'm like, yo, how else can I say this is the new day? Wait, how wait, else yeah, can no, I no. But Wale, during the battle, you were in the middle, so you yeah, could have been the I guy in the middle. Know. Why are you on the New Day side? No, we were running around. I don't you understand. Were... <laughs> you should have been in the middle. Yeah, That's like yeah. the, I the judge. It. There's I three can... Usos. I see what you said. <laughs> no. Why are there three members of the Usos? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is Wait. Wait. You were the best. <laughs> this is the one who <laughs> third who started panicking when he was like, okay. So I was like, yo. Uh, so you uh, do too much. I like, you didn't have a lot of time. <laughs> nah, I didn't. Like, I was different, man. <laughs> you drew it's, more than you had to. This painting is going to be his fault. <laughs> you can watch Quizzlemania now by clicking the video on the right. And is Seth Rollins leaving WWE? Watch me argue why in our horror show and Extreme Rules predictions by clicking the video below that. Follow us on Twitter at WrestleTalk underscore TV and send us that Bitcoin and me at Ollie Davis. That was wrestling.